Hey, today we're going to talk about hyper. What's the difference between hyperthyroidism and hypo? Or well, I'm going to talk about hyper, hypo, any gland in the body. I want to give you some principles on that. Hyper means too much excess, and hypo means a deficiency or not enough of something. So if we're relating it to the thyroid, for example, um, let's just take a look at um, how this works. You have a gland that originates or communicates a hormone. Hormones are communications. So the gland makes the hormone, it produces and receives the hormone going back because these hormones are on a um, kind of an on-off feedback loop and so they come back and they influence over here and they call that uh, negative and positive feedback. So if I were to talk to you right now and you were to receive that message through your ear into your brain and then give me some acknowledgement that would be the feedback I'm talking about so then I would feel I would be heard and I wouldn't need to continue talking anymore so a good example is just with your kids if they're listening to you and they comply with doing the dishes then you don't need to say anything else right so but if that thing is ignored oh my goodness then that gland will start working hyper mode and start producing more and more and more communication. So in some cases, what causes the hyper is the failing of the return communication to turn that thing off because the off switch is not is broken. Okay, so that's one thing. And um, so that's one thing. And then the other thing is that the environment your glands are very sensitive to your environment and stress and whatever you're experiencing in your environment stress can definitely cause a hyper mode uh, especially in the adrenal glands the stress glands on top of the kidney if you're always stressed out that adrenal is going to pump a lot of adrenaline and cortisol out and you start gaining weight you, you can't sleep and you start breaking down you start getting older all these wonderful things right so I had this lady who um, had this problem and she went on a very, very long trip overseas in a part of the country that is uh, on some country that's very, very laid back and chilled out. All of her adrenal symptoms just cleared up like that. All of her endocrine symptoms that she had from a hyper state just completely went away. And she started losing weight and she was not actually cutting calories. And she was eating worse, actually eating more fat and more calories and things, and even sweets. So she comes back, <clears throat> eats less, eats better, and then falls apart again. So I know for a fact that stress can majorly influence your glands, your gland health. And they usually kind of, what they'll do, they'll initially make it hyper, and then you burn out, and then it becomes a hypo. So hypos can come from a long-term burnout of pushing, 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 accumulating stress, getting old, and then just kind of going downhill. But also your foods can influence this as well, and especially with the gland called the pancreas. When you eat sugar, that pancreas responds by pumping out insulin to lower the sugar in your blood. So if you're doing this too much, and I love, I love how people say, well, I'm just eating normal amounts of sugar. Wait a second, what is normal amounts of sugar? The average person has 145 pounds of sugar a year. Like even a, uh, a cup of uh, so a juice, for example, has like, what, 13 teaspoons? That's like way, 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 way too much. And that's enough to really jack up and hyper that pancreas to the point of creating a, a trauma every time you eat something like that. And then eventually becomes a hypo and you get diabetes type one where you don't produce the insulin anymore and then you're, uh, you're pretty much screwed. So <clears throat> diet can influence the gland, stress, and one more thing. It's called endocrine disruptors. And um, those are the chemicals in the environment. That's, that's the, food, the chemicals in the food, the hormones in the food, the animal products, the genetically modified foods, the pesticides in the foods. All that greatly influences the gland because it acts like estrogen. That's why they call it... Um, not just endocrine disruptors, but estrogen disruptors as well. So an endocrine disruptor is anything that mimics estrogen. So we're going to just shut that thing down and we're going to create um, little <coughs> cyst and nodules. So if people have like nodules in their thyroid or a cyst in their thyroid or a growth or fibrocystic breast or, or 
uh, cyst on the ovaries. What that comes from is environmental estrogen mimickers. And so in that case, they need to clean that up, clean up the diet and start consuming foods that are anti-estrogenic like the cruciferous vegetables. Um, and one thing about those cysts though, as a remedy, sea kelp is a really good uh, thing for nodules, um, especially of the breast and the ovaries. The ovary and uh, breasts respond very, very good to sea kelp, FYI. That's like seaweed. Um, so those are the three things that highly influence whether someone's hyper or hypo. Hyper is more of an endocrine disruptor situation unless it's the pancreas and then it's sugar. Well, unless it's the adrenal and then it's stress. But the point is that any one of these can either make you hyper or hypo and you just have to <clears throat> do this one last technique to figure it out. Ask yourself, when did you start noticing signs of hyper or hypo and then what occurred just before that and you're going to find you're going to get a clue as a diet change a stress change or an exposure to some endocrine disruptor hope that helped i'll see you in the next video